I don't know all that much about the audience that I'm able to sustain on the internet. But one thing I do know is that they love Bayonetta. And given that she's a very stylish character, of course we have to jump into her fashion. So let's get into it. Fashion. Hola, my name is X and I like to experiment with fashion as well as talk about whatever the hell I want on social media whenever I feel like it. And in this video, the agenda is still straightforward. So let me quickly break it down for you. I'm going to start off by taking just a quick look at some background around Bayonetta, kind of like how she came to be developed, some context around the game. And then I'm going to talk about the three main things that I absolutely love about her fashion and style. And then following that, in typical fashion, like I have in previous videos, I'm just going to go within each of the three games and then just discuss what I love about all the playable skins that she has. Let's take it from the top with some quick context. Bayonetta is an action video game franchise developed by Platinum Games and published by Sega, originally released in 2009. The series follows an Umber Witch who has awakened from a centuries-long slumber and is on a mission to discover more about who she is, where she came from, and just more about her purpose. She has these incredible powers, which makes for a visually stunning and exciting game experience. The work is obviously strong enough for me to want to discuss a lot of the design elements involved. Bayonetta was developed by Hideke Kamiya, who also developed games like Devil May Cry and Beautiful Joe. And if you haven't played those games, they're definitely some visually stunning games. So it's no surprise that a lot of those same powerful mechanics and elements made their way into Bayonetta as well. As far as who was in charge of Bayonetta's design specifically, that would be Mari Shimazaki. And they actually published a blog on the Platinum Games website back in 2009, giving some great insight and background into the development of Bayonetta. It took over a year for them to fully align on her design. Some of the main character ingredients that they wanted for Bayonetta, obviously a female, a modern witch, could wield four guns, wore glasses and was fashionable. Emphasis on fashionable, which leads me to discuss the three main things that I love about Bayonetta's style, starting with her femininity and body confidence. While Bayonetta's style definitely leans more towards the mature and sexier side, she doesn't always show the most amount of skin, especially compared to other female characters in other franchises and media. She often relies on cutouts, which often show just a little peekaboo of the skin, but she largely relies on her amazing body and silhouette to give us a lot of that confidence and a lot of that charisma. Her posture alone gives so much confidence and it doesn't even really matter what she's wearing. The confidence pours through the clothes and her outfits. I think that highlights just how well Madi designed Bayonetta to be fashionable. Just her constitution and biology and structure alone, she has just enough sophistication, intelligence, and grace to prevent the outfits from steering too raunchy or trashy. She elevates it naturally just with her aura. And that's, I think, the definition of body confidence. Someone who's so confident and sophisticated can easily pull off designer looks. And I feel like that's a lot of the style and fashion that we're getting from Bayonetta. If you take a close look, which we will, at some of the different outfits that she wears, there's so much detailing involved. And you could just imagine all the different fabrics that went into constructing all of her different outfits. We're getting texture, we're getting decoration, we're getting drama, movement, flow, dimension. Her design literally give us all the different elements that we could ever want to dissect from a fashion perspective, which is why I think people find her style and how she's depicted in her aesthetic so interesting and so enthralling. Looking at just some of the three base looks that she has across the franchise alone, we're getting Mugler kind of type look, we're getting Versace, we're getting Balmain. I just love the full range of designer that she's kind of exuding and delivering us. Which brings me into the final point regarding range and diversity in her fashion. Anybody who's passionate about fashion can be a true fashionista, but I think that there's some people who are just born with it, who are constructed and meant to be a fashionista and that's exactly who and what she is when we look at the different skins that she's depicted in we're getting full range from casual to full classy to camp to a little more adventurous and rugged my favorite type of fashionistas are those who can exercise a wide range of looks and isn't afraid to push different boundaries
boundaries within their personal style. That's ultimately how you discover how far you can go with your tastes. And she is very tasteful. That's literally just the TLDR and how I feel about Bayonetta's fashion overall. I could gush and gush and gush, but I feel like a lot of my thoughts and feelings will definitely come through as we dissect more of the specific looks that she is featured in throughout each of the games within the franchise. Starting with this Bayonetta 1 skin, it feels like just a bit more of a covered up version of her OG skin. I particularly like how she has a little bit of like this cloak over her shoulders, which just gives a little bit more dimension, but it seems a little bit baggier because we can kind of see some folds. I feel like her suits that are truly form fitting, like there is no room for a fold. I love the gold elements. Overall feels a little flat, but it's still a pretty solid skin. Not the biggest fan of this skin. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's graceful. I think it's giving a super strong holy vibe. Like none just with like the head scarf. I love the length that it has and just gives a little bit more of that flow. But, and I think overall, because it is just so flat and standard, it's not the most interesting or visually striking to me, but it's a clean, classy, fresh outfit. I just love this outfit. Obviously we're getting a lot of body confidence in the upper body just with mostly her the front of her torso and her chest being covered but I just think with the extent of coverage in the rest of the outfit including like the super thigh high boots and just how they come to really meet evenly with like that kind of like tutu style skirt almost like um, petticoat like I just love that kind of relationship and where the different clothing items are meeting each other. I've mentioned in the past with Guilty Gear how I love pointed hats. Very much captures who she is as an Umber Witch. A game developed in Japan wouldn't be complete without some sort of like cultural attire involved. And this is obviously very beautiful. I particularly like how there's a little bit of a sexier spin given for Bayonetta, of course, especially with just the lake stockings and the shortness of the top. I still think it is tasteful and gives enough kind of respect to the beauty and the majesty of that kind of decorative design and pattern and color. Also nice to see it come in a few different colors, but of course I'm biased towards the purple one. I've mentioned in many past videos how I just love the color purple. I think this next skin hits on the head the boundaries and the diversity that Bayonet is able to push with her style. Look how crazy casual it is. A t-shirt and just some like sporty shorts with, to make it fashion, some white heels and black socks. It's just so fashion. And it's so effortless and it's so casual and somebody who carries themselves like Bayonetta could pull this off and for some reason doesn't feel too foreign or too out of place for someone like her. There's some duality in this outfit that is just so subtle but very striking as we get some of the white in the inner leg and then around the kind of cuffs of the sleeves, which just really pop. And I also just love that red detailing. And this is what makes it feel designer is I feel like if it just didn't have some like extra little bit of prints or little extra bits of like cuts and designs throughout the suits, it wouldn't be as high fashion. It would feel just much more kind of like a typical video game skin. And of course the lightsaber, I know it's meant to be a weapon, but it's actually a really great accessory just to really hit home that Star Wars type vibe that we're getting here. I just think it's interesting to envision her as a Jedi. I wouldn't have maybe initially thought to go this route, but it makes total sense for her. As long as we have a bodysuit, we're on the right track. But of course, you know it wouldn't be complete without some sort of bikini look. This is just a good feature of her silhouette and just really seeing how her form and shape helps the clothes that she wears come to life. It's interesting to see Bayonetta depicted as a cheerleader. Of course she could pull it off, but obviously that feels a little bit contrary to a bit of her kind of personality, not to say that she isn't capable of being spirited, but I just think it's interesting seeing a more kind of cutesy, softer contrast to her style and her personality. I think it would be interesting to see this in maybe a different color scheme, a bit of a darker one. This skin is very similar to the first one that was shown, but the difference here is obviously just kind of like that hood and mask that she's wearing, which is really, I think, what makes this look. Also has a lot more gold detailing, which prevents it from looking too flat and gives it a little more kind of draw, kind of pulling you in to examine. And I think that the flare is just a little more exaggerated at the bottom of the leg, which I think echoes and ties back to kind of like that roundedness and the looseness of that hood that she's wearing. So this clip is from Bayonetta 2, but it's the first clip of her OG outfit. Number one, this is where I feel like she was giving us Mugler. Mugler is a brand that does feature a lot of bodysuits, especially as of recent, but I love that she features some like extra buckle and like gold decorations. And I love 
love the contrast between the black and the white, just with how the gloves and the arm is almost completely white. I also love how the hair manifests itself in like arm extensions. It just adds so much more presence and drama and movement, especially when she's waving her arms around. Love some peekaboo of skin in the very back as well as the chest. And I also love the touches of red and they're actually kind of done in a triangular way where we see it featured on the wrist and then within like her honeycomb bun type hairstyle, which brings us into Bayonetta 2, starting with her premiere skin. This is definitely part of my top five favorite outfits. Obviously what I appreciate most and what stands out the most is like that Shaw completely surrounding her body around her shoulders. I just love how the hair like texture and flow and material is hanging in the backs, almost like angel wings. I love how the detailing goes across the front of the legs all the way down to the bottom. And then she just has like this really awesome yellow jewel silver plated breastplate situation going on too. That's what I love about Bayonetta designs is just the use of metallics and that type of decoration just to really elevate the look oh, super easily makes it look so opulent and expensive. Once again, we see some cultural clothing featured. I really love this one and I think it's done even more tastefully and classy than it was in Bayonetta 1. It kind of reminds me of what Beidou wears from Genshin. As much as I love the white version of this, I feel like white and gold is so angelic, so royal. I really love the blue, particularly because of the black stockings. I said this before with regards to the female Jojo outfits. I just think that black stockings are effortlessly sexy, but also a good way to kind of cover up and elevate a look as well. And I feel like that's definitely what we're getting here. I like the black version obviously way better. I think if you were to maybe actually change up the hat. In fact, you could maybe even keep the hat, but maybe like change up the top a little bit. This is actually a wearable outfit. It doesn't have to just be suitable to the kind of cop cosplay situation. The hat is actually really chic and paired with the luxurious looking belt, a very suitable mini skirt, and then the stockings and heels. This is like some club wear. You could wear this out to a nice dinner. This is practical. And in that same vein, of course, we have to have some sort of sexy, cutesy, schoolgirl type thing. Although this could really just be, yet again, a much more practical, sophisticated outfit. This isn't out of the realm of possibility in every day. And I love the color variations. We're definitely getting some variety, which I think is actually really helpful from a styling perspective. But I love the one with the red blazer the most because it's giving Kakegiri. If you know, you know, it's an anime. Love the anime. It's just interesting to see what a more mature and grown version of that outfit looks like. There's obviously not much to talk about here. It's just like a silver surfer skin for her. But once again, similar to the bikini one in the Bayonetta one, I feel like just seeing this in her pure form is a great reflection of her silhouette. And when we think about models, their proportions, and just how they're framed so that the clothes hang in just a really great and artistic way, that's really what her silhouette is giving us, very model. And I'm sure that was another consideration taken into account when designing her character. Now this is where we're getting into that really luxurious Orline Hulk couture type wear that she has, which is what I really love for her. And I think blends very well with like her intelligent glasses wearing sophisticated type profile. The large roses that she has on each hip and just how they're collected at the top of the hat gives such great texture and interesting detail. And of course, a look like this wouldn't be complete without some fur, just to really amplify the texture, the opulence, and the sophistication. And I love how the dress is slit towards the bottom, how we have a back slit and a front slit. Again, just giving some sexiness that is done in such a tasteful, mature, and graceful way. And even though the alternative version of this dress is a bit more flat, I love the color choice. And I actually like the use of fur here better, more of like a collar to frame her neck, which gives good dimension to the slimness of the dress and a little extra presence. I'm a huge, 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 huge fan of this skin because I love Princess Peach. I've already done a video on how I think Princess Peach is a fashion icon. I just think it's done in such a mature but functional way. It's not too over the top gownish with like too many flares or ruffles. I feel like it's still done in a way that feels designer, feels artistic runway, but also true to Peach, but also maybe a little ready to wear as well. Again, while the dress is really short and actually if you flip the model upwards, you could definitely see the panties. I still think that from a certain perspective, we're getting a lot of body coverage actually, especially with how high the stockings go, which again, I feel like speaks to her femininity, making this really the sexy point of the outfit versus strictly the skin or what's truly being revealed in the outfit. I love how long the sleeves fall for some extra drama, as well as those lovely gold decorations of like stars,
stars, coins. It's just such a great allusion to the Super Mario franchise. And I like how on Peaches we have Mario as like the little plush. And then on Daisies we have Luigi. This one also definitely leans a bit camp. But if you take away the hat, I think you have a really interesting green dress style outfit with some really cool brown belt detailings just to make it interesting and prevent it from feeling too flat. The fact that the boots are thigh high with some white stocking covering does make it feel very everyday. I, I feel like this is very fall, winter. And I love seeing her featured in the Samus suit. This might be the most armored look that she has in general throughout the different games. It feels so lethal, like she's this cyberpunk assassin. And I like that it's not a full helmet. It's almost like a visor, which is an accessory that I feel like would be very fitting for today with all that, that Y2K kind of like futuristic type craze. And I can't believe they went as far as to do a Star Fox outfit for her. This definitely feels more like a Halloween type kind of costume, but overall, I just think it's such another fashionable, stylish reimagining of some Nintendo characters that you just wouldn't think could be so stylish in how the characters wear their original outfits. Like the way the red scarf is just tighter on the neck just feels a little more fashion. That now brings us into Bayonetta 3, and starting with her premiere look, this was my top favorite Bayonetta look. There is just so much amazing attention to detail, use and touches of color, and just overall proportion that I think makes this outfit an absolute knockout. I love the use of like the braided hair effect. We've been, we saw the long, loose, fine strands of hair. The braided aspect just gives it a little more solidarity and richness. And I love how it's like a bow effect in the back. I also love the fact that it's like a dress over like these pants or these tights. I think we've seen more people doing skirts over pants, especially men as a way to branch into skirts and dresses. So just the fact that she has an outfit like this, I think is so fashion forward. This is where I was getting a lot of Balmain. I feel like Balmain has played with silhouettes like this and also has a lot of use of gold and black, which like I've said before, is a classic and luxurious combination. I think it's interesting that Bayonetta 3 features a lot of color variations over a variety of unique skins. I hate the fact that they made her hair and the whole entire outfit color changeable. I think it's actually kind of ugly and tacky, but I am biased towards the purple one, of course. I also kind of like the blue and the gold. I feel like there's enough of the gold to kind of come in and not make it feel like just a complete blue wash of the outfit. I didn't even know this skin existed, but it's easily a top fave. I think it looks like a fighting game character, actually. I love the big ponytail. I love the big bow in the hair. I love the cropped top with the cropped jacket. I love the hot pants. I love the stockings, and I love the fact that the knee pads have like hearts in them. This is just such a cute skin, and it actually really looks good in the different color varieties that it's featured in. I feel like they made great use of different colors in different spots to give some really great color coordination ideas, actually. I'm getting a huge Riku from Final Fantasy vibes on this. I feel like this is a more kind of like street style, cyberpunk kind of outfit that we could see Riku wear easily. This one is like so elite. It almost feels like a legendary skin. Like you have to pay to unlock this just with how extravagant it is. My first thought when seeing this was like an Asian dynasty Sailor Moon. Do you see what I mean? Like for me, it's the use of like the golden armor effects throughout. Yes, the colors I think are functional. I love the relationship between how much of the gold is adorning her body and the different garments, as well as how it balances out against the flatness of the colors. The colors are really popping against all of that metallic design, but some of the hair colors do make it feel a little more ethereal and mystical. So I really love how this outfit and this skin can take on different vibes, depending on the color, especially. What's so fascinating about this one is not only like the kind of Egyptian, Middle Eastern vibe that I'm kind of getting from it, very Cleopatra, but I also think it's the one that really looks the best in any of the color options. I love the amount of body confidence we're getting, enough skin, to, but not too much over the top. I love the flow and how the fabric, especially in the skirt, just like cascades 
in like these waves and like semi pleats. I love how the fabric dangles from the elbow and just gives a little extra length and drama. I feel like skins like this especially complement the movement and the form and the different kind of voguing that Bayonetta does. It's really good for that type of action packed character. This skin confuses me and I don't think I like it. It feels like a completely different playable character. Many of these skins did, but like I could picture Bayonetta in those different skins. I'm having a hard time seeing her here. I'm a fan of steampunk, but this feels like it leans a little more medieval. I really like that double breasted tailcoat vest. That's probably like my favorite part out of the outfit. I feel like I've seen something similar in some of the, maybe some of the Jojo outfits and some of the Guilty Gear outfits, but I'm personally not getting the vision here. And I think it's the skin that looks the worst in all of the different color options. The first skin, original version of the skin, I can kind of get into, but other than that, not a favorite. That was as deep of a dive into Bayonetta fashion and style as I could manage at this time. I loved looking at all of her different skins and I would just love to see her featured in so many more in the future if possible because I think that her character design and prototype and blueprint is so conducive to that. Excuse my increasingly delayed posting schedule. I'm still getting used to this YouTube thing. I also need to kick up my shorts game. So trying to balance all that out is a bit of a challenge, but I'm ready to go. Spring is literally right around the corner. So as always, plenty more fashion videos with regard to general media, anime, video games, whatever it is that I feel like to come. And until the next video, I'll talk to you later.